worst tragedy that our county has, has seen in, in anybody's memory. utter chaos. It was crazy. We just watched all the houses around us burn as we just sat there with garden hoses. The focus has been on evacuating residents. It's like, oh, yeah, we need to leave right now. This is a city that has basically popped up in less than 24 hours. This is my new home. So let's take you to the very first few seconds of this firefight in Middletown. CBS 13 photojournalist Matt Zielinski captured these gut-wrenching images that truly take your breath away. It's chaos. It's just utter chaos. There's nothing like it. These were the first few moments of the Valley Fire. Buildings were engulfed, cars torched, and the wind sent embers from rooftop to rooftop, destroying homes. But I've never seen a fire move this quickly and, and with so much violent force. I don't even want to begin to guess how many homes have been lost here in Middletown. The first fire crews on scene did what they could. It was a battle they would lose. Trying to keep this wind whip blaze from dancing from home to home was close to impossible. The people of Middletown were watching their lives change in an instant. There's not much really we can do. There's not much anybody can do but hope and pray. Well, we're going to bring in a colleague, Matt Zielinski. He's one of our photographers who's been out on the firing lines literally all night. You've seen it all. You look tired, but you've been out in the elements with not only the firefighters, but some of the folks, the residents. What have you seen? Uh, a lot. I, you know, it's hard to say. Um, just it, the thing, I guess, that kind of struck me was that there's um, homes that will start on fire and they have to, like, just leave them because... There, if there's a home that they can't protect, they have to like move on. And as far as that goes, there was a lot of that going on in, in Middletown. So. And you were describing what sounds kind of like mayhem. I mean, wires down, trees down, roads blocked, folks having to go off-roading to get in and out of these communities. Yeah, yeah. I mean, so it was tough for me, and it was tough for uh, firefighters. There was a point where um, some, you know, cables had been down, and there was an R there's an RV that's, you know, kind of crashed into it, and uh, and then there's another set of cables later you know, down, and and those ones people had to work around, but. You know, then, you know, that workaround included then a tree down. So, you know, getting even access to the town was extremely difficult. Okay, so. we'll go home, get some sleep. Thank you so much for all your efforts and stay safe out there. Um, well, um, for, for what I saw with my own eyes, uh, I can say that the entire um, w west side of Middletown it, um, was completely under attack by this fire, and that's where I spent most of my time. And then the footage that you're seeing probably includes a lot of the homes in that area. Um, the drive between um, uh, uh, Clear Lake and Middletown uh, was a difficult drive uh, with um, uh, power poles that had uh, burnt in half and power wires uh, strewn across the road. Um, and there, it was, it, it was, it was a really bad, you know, for, you know, I, even for myself who, you know, who see a lot of fires up close, it was, it was a bad one. Sure. Do you, did you get a chance to speak to anyone out there from that area, anyone that was trying to leave? What, what were the people out there saying last night as all of this was turning even worse? There, there was a number of stories that sounded something like this. Uh, um, one, in, including the the, uh, the sheriff in uh, this area, told me, uh, and it was that there were people who, you know, ran to help their um, neighbors, you know, fight their fire or their their friends and things like that, only to come back to their own home and it, it's gone. And uh, I think the one fellow that the the sheriff was talking about. Um, uh, he was, I think, a firefighter himself, uh, if I remember right. And, you know, the other individual that I spoke to, um, you know, he was able, I believe, to save his, uh, it was his dad's home. Um, and it, 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 he saw all the homes around him, all his neighbors' homes go up in flames. So, you know, sometimes it's that protective space, but I mm -hmm. think this is one of those fires that, you know, even with that, I mean, if you had somewhat of a tree somewhere where near you uh, and your home, it, it, it really could have caused a lot of heartache and trouble for a lot of people. Yeah, it grew so quickly. It didn't give people much time, really, to, to get, you know, to get what they needed out of there. So, thank no, you, Matt. No, no, there was, there was an amazing number of people who, um, 
who told me that the amount of time that they had was 10 minutes. And that's 10 minutes wow. to get out of places uh, uh, completely. And, and that all happened at once. And I had uh, firefighters that, that told me that the, uh, the burning and the rate at which the fire spread uh, was as bad as uh, these uh, great fires in the past in Oakland, um, that, that the whole roadway was completely jam-packed with people all trying to leave at the same time. And, you know, uh, I, I was under the impression and if, you know, if I'm not correct, that some of these cars that are left out there on the freeway right now were left out there because, uh, you know, people told me because they ran out of gas or because um, that, that maybe the fire was too close or, or they wanted to all consolidate and get into a car with other family members or friends. Um, you know, to get out it, it's, been, it's been crazy. And, and then there were those who were not even close to the fire and had to hear about it far away. We, we, we talked to... Um, uh, a, a cheerleading coach and their cheer team and football team uh, were at an away game and had to get the call that they had, um, you know, basically had people who they already knew at that point in time they had lost their homes and they still play football. All right, Matt, thank you so much for all your hard work overnight. The pictures that we're looking at are absolutely heartbreaking. We're going to continue to follow the story, and we do have a couple of crews out on their way to the Butte Fire and the Lake Fire. We want to show you some of the first images as the flames roared through town. There's houses going up in flames right now. The house next to mine is gone. There was a lot gone in an instant in the heart of Middletown, where people had little to no warning to make a run for it. It's chaos. It's just utter chaos. There's nothing like it. As fire crews tried to stand toe to toe with the flames, they knew this was a battle they would not win. But I've never seen a fire move this quickly and, and with so much violent force. We saw that force firsthand as the flames circled one of our news crew vans. CBS 13 photojournalist Matt Zielinski was one of the first on scene to capture these images of cars being torched and homes engulfed as the wind-whipped flames sent embers from rooftop to rooftop. I don't even want to begin to guess how many homes have been lost here in Middletown. This is what one evacuee saw as he drove through the inferno, flames dotting the landscape of this once peaceful part of Northern California that took a direct hit from a now deadly blaze, leaving just charred reminders of what was. Now, there's not much really we can do. There's not much anybody can do but hope and pray. And the Valley Fire burning in Lake County. We're going to start with the Valley Fire. It's burned 40,000 acres, as mentioned. It has no containment to report. That is according to Cal Fire. Hundreds of homes have been lost. 80% of homes in Middleton have burned to the ground. So, as we said, basically the entire town pretty much wiped out. Four firefighters have been injured. They are in the hospital with second degree burns. Over a thousand firefighters are on the scene. They are doing everything they can to try and save homes. Take a listen. That the firefighters and the law enforcement officials who are present here tonight really have a very unique situation. Not only are they moving from street to street to community to community, one by one they're addressing this as things literally flare up from neighborhood to neighborhood. From one moment they're dealing with a grass fire to the next moment they're dealing, as you see behind us, a number of commercial buildings that are going up in flames. This is going to go on all night long and again the firefighters are doing everything they can to stop this. Fire officials say this fire is of historic proportions. Historic is probably an understatement. We're talking about a community that's been in existence for hundreds of years. There's a lot of history here. There's a lot of family here. All these things are going to be impacted by this fire. And again, we're not going to have any idea what the totality of this is going to be until this is all said and done. We did talk to one resident who told us what it was like near the fire lines in Middletown. Here's what they had to say. It went all the way around us. There was no stopping it. That would just watch the houses around us burn. Uh, yeah, it was utter chaos. It was crazy. We just watched all the houses around us burn as we just sat there with garden hoses and did what we could do. And my dad had a pool, luckily, so we were scooping buckets out of the pool to keep. We had to tear down the whole fence and everything to stop the fire from getting in the yard. But you know what? My dad does maintenance and he does his fire safety and that's what it came down to why he was able to save his house. One man describes what it was like to evacuate his house in the middle of the night. Yeah, there was chaos trying to leave. We had to leave on a road that goes around Hidden Valley the back way. I've never even been on that road. Nobody's able to turn around and go back yet. 
The local cheerleading coach believes she lost everything from the fire. We had a chance to talk to hear her. This is what she had to say. Once the embers started flying, they started starting other fires and three towns and now that's going into four are gone. Our school burned, houses, people lost their their whole lives. Photographer Matt Zielinski joins us live near Middletown in Lake County this morning. Matt, we just heard from that cheerleading coach that uh, you had the chance to talk to about losing pretty much everything. And this is just one of several stories just like that from that area. What can you tell us? Yeah, uh, I mean, her story is the one that I think I'll, I'll probably remember the most. I mean, she, um, you know, um, obviously had had to be strong for the kids. And I think, you know, the kids were also strong for each other and uh, for her. So I think that's that just kind of stands out to me as one of those one of those stories that I think, you know, uh, I would guess people would remember. Um, and, you know, uh, I, I've been still trying to talk to folks uh, out here. I've uh, seen more people coming into the uh, Hidden Valley um, uh, area, uh, although I think there are people who may have, you know, been behind police lines. Uh, there's not like a steady flow or anything of anybody coming into the area, but I am see seeing occasional people in this area now. And, and uh, the thing that I'm, uh, you know, I'm not, might, might not be in the best position to see, but I'm a little surprised that uh, um, even though, the, you know, the sky is... Uh, starting to clear up a little i have seen um uh, nothing yet in terms of an air attack on any of the areas that are smoky i haven't seen any planes mm -hmm. going overhead but that might just be where i'm located so it's still really smoky out here and uh, um you know fires are definitely uh, i'm sure still burning in a lot of places yeah talk about uh, you mentioned not seeing anybody uh, attacking from the air but the number of fire trucks that are out there this morning they're coming in from all over Yes, they are, and then, and and you know, uh, it might have been speculation, but I, I know that somebody said something to the extent that it takes a little while for them to get here, and they really needed them now, and that was, you know, uh, yeah, six hours ago now. So um, I think that the, uh, the the additional resources are going to be, you know, very, um, you know, greatly welcomed and appreciated, and. Um, I'm sure they're going to be glad that they're here. And then at the same time, you know, I, I was here when there were res there were resources that were arriving, and because of you know power lines and um, such down in certain spots, um, they had to to improvise in order to be able to even get access to to, to Middleton or Middletown. So. Yeah, it's still a very dynamic situation out here, and, you know, like I said, difficult for firefighters along with everybody else. All right, Matt, thank you so much for, again, all your hard work overnight. You saw some very devastating things firsthand, heard some really horrific stories, and we appreciate you sharing them with us this morning. We'll continue to talk to Matt throughout the morning. Photographer Matt Zielinski joins us live near Middletown in Lake County this morning. You've been out all night, Matt. You've heard some incredible stories. What can you tell us uh, from what you saw last night? What really stands out to you? I know you said earlier that some people only had 10 minutes to get out and get away from the fire. Uh, yeah, and I, I wasn't uh, there um, when that happened, uh, per se. Um, I was uh, on, en route. Um, they just had to, to tell me how crazy it was, but the evidence of it was, you know, on the roads, there were cars that were, um, were left for one reason or another, uh, numerous cars, and, um, you know, a lot of people who, you know, packed up what they could, but, you know, people kind of, came to tears when they talked about how they were um, away and couldn't go back in and um, couldn't get those pictures and things that people want to get in these types of situations. They just didn't have time and nobody was allowed to go back. And, um, and one woman was talking about how um, she had one of her dogs with her and she didn't have the other ones. So, um, you know, it's unknown, you know, for a lot of people. There's a lot of animals out here that are, you know, currently in the Walmart parking lot, not not far from where I am right now. And, uh, you know, horses and things of that nature, pot belly pigs even, I think. Um, so uh, it's, uh, it's a really, uh, you know, difficult situation for a lot of the people who live out here. And, um, and then I would also say that, that, the, that, that, you know, the firefight was really difficult for the firefighters. Um, one of the things that stuck out in my mind was that they, um, when I asked a couple of uh, the firefighters to have the chance, they um, did not say that they had any issues with water, but I'm sure, you know, more information on that will come to light uh, with time. It, they were definitely putting water in, they were plugging into uh, fire hydrants, um, and uh, and there was just a lot more fire than, than there was fire water, it seemed like.
And just thinking about what you've been telling us as far as people trying to get out, people trying to find places for their pets, people abandoning their vehicles. This was all happening in such a short window. Uh, for people to understand, I mean, we're looking at the flames and it's heartbreaking, but this entire town was wiped out. Uh, yeah, yeah, you're hearing a, a fire truck uh, go by me right now. Um, you know, there's still a lot of activity out here. Um, yeah, and I, I, it, see, you know, it was said by a number of people that this, this will be historic. It will be, um, at least for this county, possibly the worst thing that's ever happened in, in years. Um, so, yeah, it's definitely a, a really difficult situation for the residents and for, for firefighters and for everybody. We're um, going to be talking about this for a long time. Yes, Matt, thank you so much for your hard work out there overnight. We appreciate it. And all of the video that we're seeing this morning, devastating photos there uh, near Middletown. Cody, I know you have some relative...